Section 7.5 are sum and difference formulas. So this is for when we are adding or subtracting angles inside of a trig function because we can't just distribute the trig function. So for example, if you have a cosine of angle alpha plus angle beta, then that's equivalent to cosine of alpha times cosine of beta minus sine of alpha times sine of beta. And cosine alpha minus beta is cosine alpha cosine beta plus sine alpha sine beta. So these little pictures here are kind of represent how we get them and based on whether we're adding or subtracting the angles. So for example, if we want to evaluate cosine of 7 pi over 12, 7 pi over 12 is not one of the angles that we have memorized on the unit circle, but we can write it as a sum or difference of angles that we do know on the unit circle. So 7 pi over 12 is the same thing as 3 pi over 12 plus 4 pi over 12, which is the same thing as pi over 4 plus pi over 3. So we can rewrite the cosine of 7 pi over 12 as the cosine of pi over 4 plus pi over 3. So now we have two angles that are added inside of cosine, so we can apply the cosine sum formula. The cosine sum formula is the same trig function multiplied together and the opposite sign in the middle. So cosine of alpha plus beta, cosine of pi over 4 plus pi over 3, would be the cosine of pi over 4 times the cosine of pi over 3, opposite sign minus sine of pi over 4 times sine of pi over 3. So then I'm just going to evaluate each of these individually. So the cosine of pi over 4 is root 2 over 2, the cosine of pi over 3 is 1 half, the sine of pi over 4 is root 2 over 2, and the sine of pi over 3 is root 3 over 2. So then root 2 over 2 times 1 half is root 2 over 4, root 2 over 2 times root 3 over 2 is root 6 over 4, so subtract them and you just end up with root 2 minus root 6 all over 4. So I found two things that added up to 7 pi over 12, so now I have two angles being added inside cosine, and I applied the cosine sum formula. We also have sum and difference formulas for sine and tangent as well. So cosine is same trig function opposite sine, sine is same sine opposite trig function. So the sine of alpha plus beta is the sine of alpha cosine beta plus cosine alpha cosine beta. Always opposite angles, and in this case opposite trig functions, and then the same sine. So sine alpha minus beta is sine alpha cosine beta minus cosine alpha sine beta. For tangent, we have tangent of alpha plus beta is tangent alpha plus tangent beta over 1 minus tangent alpha tangent beta. And then the only one with the difference is that the signs change. So whichever sign it is is the one that's on top, and then the opposite sign's on bottom. I always say if you don't have the tangent one memorized, you can always evaluate the tangent one by doing sine divided by cosine. So try to evaluate the sine of 165 degrees without a calculator using the sine sum or difference formulas. I split 165 degrees into 30 degrees and 135 degrees. 30 degrees is the same place as pi over 6. 135 degrees is the same place as 3 pi over 4. So I evaluated sine of 165 degrees as the sine of 30 degrees plus 135 degrees. And then I applied the sine sum formula, so same sine opposite trig function. Sine of 30 degrees times the cosine of 135 degrees plus the cosine of 30 degrees times the sine of 135 degrees. Sine of 30 degrees is 1 half. Cosine of 135 degrees is negative root 2 over 2. Cosine of 30 degrees is root 3 over 2. Sine of 135 degrees is root 2 over 2. So you end up with negative root 2 over 4 plus root 6 over 4, or root 6 minus root 2 all over 4. You could find other combinations. Your goal is just to find two numbers on your unit circle that you have memorized that add or subtract to the number that you're looking for. These formulas are equivalencies, so they work either direction. Previously, we had the sine or the cosine of a specific number that wasn't memorized from the unit circle that we could apply the sum or difference formula. We can also go the other way. So for example, if we have sine of 80 degrees times cosine of 20 degrees minus cosine of 80 degrees times sine of 20 degrees, I don't know 80 and 20 degrees, but I recognize that this looks like a sine, sum, sine or cosine sum or difference formula. So if I look at it, it is opposite trig functions. So I know this is going to be a sine sum or difference formula, and sine is opposite trig functions, same sine. So I'm going to set this up going the other direction. So sine is same sine opposite trig function. So I know this is going to be a subtraction. It's going to be a difference. And I always go in the correct order. So sine of 80 degrees minus 20 degrees. So that's the sine of 60 degrees, which is root 3 over 2. So go ahead and pause the video and try evaluating the second one. 
So this one, I recognize that the same trig functions are being multiplied by each other, cosine of 7 pi over 12 times the cosine of 5 pi over 12 plus sine of 7 pi over 12 times sine of 5 pi over 12. So the same trig function is cosine, and cosine is opposite sine. So I know it's going to be a cosine difference formula. So I have the cosine of 7 pi over 12 minus 5 pi over 12, which is the cosine of 2 pi over 12, which is the cosine of pi over 6, which is root 3 over 2. So these formulas go either direction. So these problems, they don't give us the angle measurements. They just tell us that sine of alpha is equal to 4 over 5, where alpha is between pi over 2 and pi, and cosine of beta is equal to negative root 5 over 5, where beta is between pi and 3 pi over 2. And they want us to evaluate these other trig functions. So this is very similar to what we were doing in chapter 6, except for in chapter 6, we only gave you one function, sine of theta equals 4 over 5. What's cosine of theta? Now we're giving you two trig functions with two different angles and evaluating the other trig functions as well as some sum and difference formulas. So the first thing I'm going to do, because these are not on the unit circle, is I'm going to draw triangles that represent my two situations, and I'm going to have one for each angle. So for the first one, they tell me that sine of alpha is 4 over 5 with alpha between pi over 2 and pi, which means it's going to be in the second quadrant. So I drew my triangle in the second quadrant, and the ratio for sine is y over r. And then this is a 3, 4, 5 right triangle, so my x-coordinate is going to be negative 3. And then for beta, they tell me that cosine of beta is negative root 5 over 5, which is x over r, and beta is between pi and 3 pi over 2, so in the third quadrant. So I drew my triangle in the third quadrant, and I set up Pythagorean theorem, and I got y to be negative 2 root 5 because it's in the third quadrant. So now I can use these to evaluate cosine of alpha and sine of beta. So just looking at the triangles, cosine is x over r, and looking at the alpha triangle, I know that's going to be negative 3 over 5. And then looking at the beta triangle, sine is y over r, so negative 2 root 5 over 5. So now I can use all of this, and I can apply the sine or cosine sum and difference formulas to evaluate. So I know that sine of alpha minus beta, sine is same sine opposite trig function, so that's going to be sine alpha cosine beta minus cosine alpha sine beta. I don't know what alpha and beta are, but I can evaluate each of the individual pieces. So the sine of alpha, they originally gave us, but looking at the triangle is 4 over 5. The cosine of beta, again, they originally gave us, but looking at the triangle is negative root 5 over 5. And then the cosine of alpha is negative 3 over 5, and the sine of beta is negative 2 root 5 over 5. So I never actually found alpha and beta, but I can evaluate each of the parts of the trig function, just like we were doing in chapter 6. So 4 over 5 times negative root 5 over 5 is negative 4 root 5 over 25. Negative root 3 over 5 times negative 2 root 5 over 5 is positive 6 root 5 over 5 that we're then going to subtract. So we end up with negative 10 root 5 over 25 or negative 2 root 5 over 5. So go ahead and pause the video and evaluate cosine of alpha plus beta. So cosine of alpha plus beta, same trig function, opposite sine. So cosine alpha, cosine beta minus sine alpha, sine beta, where cosine of alpha is negative 3 over 5, cosine of beta is negative root 5 over 5, sine of alpha is 4 over 5, and sine of beta is negative 2 root 5 over 5. So then putting everything together, I end up with 11 root 5 over 25. So even though we never found the angle measurements, we could have still evaluate each individual trig function. If we want to evaluate the cosine of the sine inverse of 2 thirds plus the tangent inverse of 3 halves, we have to keep in mind that the answer to an inverse trig function is an angle measurement. So essentially what we have is we have the cosine of two different angles being added to each other. So this becomes a cosine sum formula, where the sine of some angle alpha is equal to 2 thirds, specifically in quadrants 1 or 4, and the tangent of some angle beta is equal to 3 halves, specifically in quadrants 1 or 4. So this is kind of putting together what we just did and also what we were doing in sub and 2 where we were composing a regular trig function with an inverse trig function. So go ahead and pause the video and see if you can evaluate the rest of this. So cosine of alpha plus beta is same trig function opposite sine. So you get cosine alpha cosine beta minus sine alpha sine beta where cosine of alpha is going to be root 5 over 3, cosine of beta is going to be 2 over root 13, sine of alpha is going to be 2 over 3, and sine of beta is going to be 3 over root 13. So then if we multiply these together, we get 2 root 5 over 3 root 13 minus 6 over 3 root 13, which is 2 root 5 minus 6 over 3 root 13. So treating this just like a sum and difference, because I'm adding two things inside of cosine, 
and remembering that the answer to inverse trig are angle measurements. We now have more identities to remember that we can apply in establishing identity problems. So establish the identity, the cosine of alpha minus beta over sine alpha sine beta when it's equal to cotangent of alpha cotangent of beta plus one. I started with the left side cosine alpha minus beta over sine alpha sine beta because I figured the difference formula would be the more complex side. And that was my first step is I applied the difference formula to the numerator, same trig function opposite sine. So I end up with cosine alpha cosine beta plus sine alpha sine beta over sine alpha sine beta. And then since I'm adding two things over a common denominator, I can split them up as a sum of two fractions. So I have cosine alpha cosine beta over sine alpha sine beta plus sine alpha sine beta over sine alpha sine beta. And that part, the sine alpha sine beta over sine alpha sine beta would become one. And then for this part, I basically split it up because it's multiplication into cosine of alpha over sine of alpha, which becomes cotangent of alpha, and cosine of beta over sine of beta, which becomes cotangent of beta. So sum and difference formulas, we have sine and cosine as our main ones. Sine is same sine opposite trig function, and cosine is same trig function opposite sine.